<clears throat> hey guys, it's Robin and my Dance. boy Cadence. Uh, today we're gonna be doing a awesome video slash podcast on hope through the election. So uh, yeah, Cadence, would you mind opening up in some prayer? Sure. God, I just I just pray that obviously there was an election this weekend or week or whatever it happened, and I know a lot of hearts were turned and a lot of disappointments, some like upbringings. And I know that a lot of, like, our country is divided right now. And we're often, like, distracted from our main goal and you being the king God. And I just pray that we find hope in that and we find guidance and that you're truly just leading us and that the people in the church can do the same and that we're being disciples of you, God, and that it's just not changing our outcome of you. And I also just pray that you give me the wisdom to speak to you guys listening. Same with Robin that we can make a difference here. And yeah, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, sweet. So um, yeah, uh, there has been an election. I know there's a lot of people, especially in our community and like Northern Idaho, who were super, super disappointed with the outcome. Yep. There, there are some people who are super happy with it. And I'm like- Some people. Yeah. But some people yeah, aren't. The majority of the people around us were not, not yeah. too stoked about it. So yeah, um, I think something super important that like to remember even through the election and just understanding that like our rights to be like a Christian isn't gonna be taken away. Mm -hmm. Like our rights to be believers and to like believe what we believe in and show truth isn't gonna be taken away. Yeah. No matter who's president. It's, mm -hmm. yeah. I was kidding today when you were talking about that earlier. Yeah. Uh, I think that's like a huge point that we have to remember and it's yeah. just kind of something we forget about often. Yeah. It's like, that's, that's what's important. So, yeah. yeah. Because there's like, there's people out there that can they can say that Jesus is their top priority, and I, I, I know that, and I believe that. But if our top priority is like most important to us, and we have politics going on, and we're very passionate about our presidents, mm. like our top priorities are not being taken away from us. Right. Like we go to a small, not a small church actually. Yeah. We go to a church uh, in Post Falls, Idaho, and like our rights to be Christian, our right to come here all the time, and just pursue our relationship with Jesus, like. That's not taken away. It doesn't matter if it's Biden or Trump. That's not taken away. Right. And, like, we need to remember that. Yeah, because that's, that's a huge priority. I mean, like, going, I mean, from the change from talking to, like, my parents and other adults who have been um, super passionate about politics, it's like going from the change from uh, Bush to Obama and then Obama to Trump was just, it's, it's, it, it's like, this church is here. Like, mm -hmm. it's not like it just disappeared. I think yeah. it's, that's important to remember. It's like. It's like our priority shouldn't just be about what my American right is and what mm -hmm. my, uh, wh who my leader is. Because not that those aren't important, because of course they are. Like to have a governing authority is always important. Yeah. It says that in Romans. And I think we just focus so much on how that person is going to dictate what we believe when mm -hmm. really that's not the true ruler. It's the ruler, yeah. it, you know, they're, they're the, the president of our country, but the ruler of, of us is. Yeah. completely different and it's always going to be good so yeah mm -hmm. awesome like god doesn't want us to settle our hearts on the things of this world and mm -hmm. many of us can hear things like that many christians just many people we know like we hear those things we hear those things every single day actually mm -hmm. but we don't truly like look at them yeah so in something like politics or president anything like that something that you might be passionate about or people around you that's thrown out the window because that doesn't matter anymore. Mm -hmm. But that's not true. Like, Jesus is your priority. And it, it's going to stay that way no matter what. Yeah. And that needs to be the case. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter if you were a Trump supporter and Biden won. Like, you're still going to be Christian. Mm -hmm. Jesus is still going to be the king. Always. He's still going to rule over you. Not Trump. Obviously, I mean, not Biden. Obviously, he's going to have, like, some, some say on your life. Like, that's just going to happen because, I mean, we live on the world and we need leaders. But at the same time, like, who's our true leader? Who's yeah. our true king? Like, mm. it's Jesus, and we all know that. So, and like Robin was saying, and I was talking about earlier, like, our rights to be Christian are not taken away from us. Mm -hmm. Like, Joe Biden is not going to come to my house and take away my Bible. Yeah. He's not going to do that. He's not going to take away my right to pray because that's impossible. Mm -hmm. Because that's just your personal relationship with Jesus. Mm -hmm. And that's a mental thing that's like, that can't be taken away. It's not going to be taken away. So why is it such a big deal? Yeah. 
Yeah, and from at least witnessing like how much passion we have, with, whether that's politics and this election, I know there's a bunch of people so passionate about what's going on. And I, I mean, not to say that I don't blame them, but yeah. I, I mean, I understand. I mean, I that. understand. Right, but at the same time, it's like, man, it's like that's not the most important thing. Mm -hmm. It's like we have so much passion about sports and like watching sports. You know, you see people jumping over couches, screaming when their team makes a touchdown, or like, yeah, it's a fumble. You know, it's it, it's those things where how how passionate we are about that. Yeah. It's like. Where's that passion for Jesus? Like, what's truly important? Why aren't we <laughs> jumping up and down, like, praising God with our whole hearts and, like, exploding of joy? Because that's that's what it says in Acts. Like, exactly. When it talks about, like, pure joy is, like, right there related to when someone comes to Christ, that is pure joy. Not just joy, it's pure, pure joy. Like, that is what our goals are. Like, that, that's what is so important. And, like, you talking about pure joy, like... Mm -hmm. I know, like, I did, you did, and many people here, we went to summer camp, mm. which our, our church hosted, and I finally got to see my relationship with Jesus. Like, I finally got to, he like, see that, mm. and a lot of people haven't seen that, but when I did, like, oh my goodness, the joy I, like, pictured, the joy I had yeah. was oh, crazy, yeah, like, it was like nothing I've ever felt. Right. And I've been fighting and fighting and trying to keep that because that's the only thing I want in this mm. world. And I've been fighting to have that. And some people haven't even seen that. Some people have gone to the church since they was born. Some people have grown up in kids ministry. They've gone through big church. They've come to youth group. They've volunteered. They've done student leadership. They've done all that. And they've still never seen a relationship with Jesus. And he models that for us in the Bible. Yeah. And other people are modeled. And... We just have to, we have to have that. Mm -hmm. And we have to go to the Bible to find that. We have to pray to him to find that. And it's like, you gotta, you gotta look for that. Mm -hmm. Because the relationship with him is the only important thing. And that's never going to be taken away from us. Like, right. we've been talking about that. It's not going to be, no matter who's in charge. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's so true. And it's like, at least you're going to talk about summer camp. It's like, not only... Is it just when I get to experience that pure joy? But it's also watching others like on their knees, crying, praying, like like they, they experience the Holy Spirit, like for real. Holy, it's like it brings me like well, at least because I was I was jumping at camp and watching, playing the song and just listening to the lyrics and watching people that I like have watched struggle with that on their knees in like yeah. bawling, crying because of how happy they are and they're like, God, I'm so sorry. Like they're coming to their senses and it's like prodigal son return home and I'm like like the um, overwhelming joy I felt. It's, it's like this like chills down your spine like goosebumps feeling and it's, I'm just like like when you feel that it's just like that's what I want to feel all the time yeah. and it's an option mm -hmm. like like it's given to us to feel that exactly and when, we, when, when we're doing that for politics or things that are so worldly and like temporary like that that's yeah. like it says it's temporary it's like at some point all of that's going to mean nothing yeah and, like, this is something I'm personally struggling with because I was telling you guys and I'm, like, modeling what it's like and what it needs to be like. Mm -hmm. Like, having a relationship with Jesus. I was at summer camp and I finally felt that. And I was like, man, I never want to leave. But it yeah. only lasted, like, four days. Right. And, man, I never want to leave. Wow, I can't wait for summer camp next year so I can finally feel that way again. Why am I not feeling that way right now? Yeah. God, why are you doing this? Why are you, like not allowing me to feel like I did at summer camp. Don't you want me to come to your kingdom? Like, mm -hmm. provide that for me. Yeah. But I'm doing absolutely nothing to put in the work. Mm -hmm. At summer camp, we were there for, what, what was it, four days? Yeah, it was like, like four, four days. Four hours, like, we had two church services every single day, like, multiple hours in the morning, mm -hmm. spent hours and hours worshiping throughout the week, hours connecting with our small groups, hours listening to Jesus, hours on our knees weeping. Like, but when I come back, when I come back to, like, my town, when I come back from summer camp, I'm going to church, like, a few times a week. I'm going to a service for an hour and a half. I'm worshiping for 25, 30 minutes. Yet, I'm still looking to feel the same I am at summer camp. Mm -hmm. How is that going to happen? Yeah, that's great. If I'm putting a few hours into Jesus every single week, but I put 20 plus, 30 plus, 40 plus hours for Jesus at summer camp. But I want the same outcome, same result. Yeah. How How's that going to happen? Because it's not. Right. Yeah, just like you were saying, like, especially that, that work aspect, just like you are saying, it's like 
pouring hours in during the summer camp and feeling this way and then spending like a quarter of the time and expecting to get the same results. It's like, it's like trying to get to a place where you want, whether you want to be a professional athlete, whether you want to be in someone who's going to theater for acting or someone who wants to do, even if you want to do business, real estate or something like that. It's like, it doesn't just come to you. Like you have to work for it. Cause at some point everyone's going to be naturally like as good as, as you are. But the people who really succeed are the people who are going to put hours in. Exactly. And what Jesus did is he, he, he didn't just talk the talk. He, like, he walked it out. Exactly. He showed us exactly how yeah. to do things. And he showed us exactly how to live. And mm -hmm. he had the same temptations we do. And when people are just like, oh, but Jesus was perfect. I'm like, but he showed us how to, like, he was still human. He just showed us how to react to when temptations come our way. And, yeah. and what to use against when Satan puts things against us. Because mm -hmm. oftentimes we think like the enemy comes as something that's like this, you know, the little red devil on your shoulder who has horns. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. no, oftentimes the devil comes as the thing you want most. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that can be a relationship. Sometimes that's money. Sometimes that's uh, just more time doing what you enjoy. Sometimes it's even sports or politics yeah. like we're doing right now. It's just like those come, it's like, oh, well, watching if Trump won, it's like, oh, that is the greatest thing that could have happened. Like that is, the, it's like. But is it? Right. It's God still God. And, and, and Jesus uses so many great things in so many great exactly. ways. And it's like the way watching like people lead through horrible leaders, as in like, like some of the worst people of all time and watching people unify out of it. For example, if we're going to talk about like 9-11, watching such a, like one of the worst, like I think it's the worst thing that ever happened on American soil. And watching the unification that came out of it and watching people unify and come together as a community and as a country to protect them, to, to, to protect and to help others is like, it's out of tragedy. Mm -hmm. And so many things God works out of brokenness to make, you know, these beautiful things. Like God turns like dust into the most beautiful paintings. Like that's how he made us out of dirt. Yeah. Like God just spoke life and we are. Yeah. Because so, that's what he can do. Right. It's, if God's that capable, why aren't we giving him the passion that we give into politics or sports or yeah. other things? Because, like, like I, I believe this and I spread this word. Like, God can work through the brokenness mm. and he can say no. And, like, your parents get a divorce or your best friend commits suicide or anything. It doesn't matter what the issue is. God can work through it and he will. Like, some people hear like God gives his toughest battles to his like strongest soldiers and it says in the Bible like God will never give you something you can't handle yeah because like like long story short you can't do it on your own like you're not forgiving your own sins you're just on your own you die mm -hmm. on your own like you you experience sadness you experience all that on your own like you're doomed you're just gone but when you like accept Jesus, when you're with Jesus, you stand a chance, and you have something to fight for. You have something to care about, and you you're not going to die. Like no. with Jesus, you can go to heaven. You can experience something that's beyond this world because this world sucks. And I bet you the people that got to heaven, like obviously there's some things of this world that I really enjoy right. that don't even have to do with Jesus. Like I love getting on the basketball court. I love playing soccer. I love like just fun times in your life. Like I obviously love doing that. Mm -hmm. But like the, the people that go to heaven will see, they're like, wow, like it truly was worth it because the things that I experienced like on this earth, like not even close to what I'm experiencing right now. Yeah. And it's like, there's one way to get there. Right. And it's like following and accepting Jesus. Like he died on the cross for your sins. And many Christians will say that. They will like preach that every single day. They'll hear it every day. And they've accepted it because they believe it. But you're not following that. Like, he's died on your sins because he loves you. Right. And you're still, like, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Because he decided he was going to die because he loves you. Mm -hmm. But still, he's not enough. Yeah. But Jesus is enough. Mm -hmm. Like, he's enough. Yeah. He's done so much for us. And he's done, like, he's literally giving us eternal life. He's giving us an opportunity to have something way better than this what this world has to offer yeah but we it's it's not enough right. because it's not worth our time but basketball's worth our time right 
or politics are worth our time, but Jesus isn't. I mean, I'm not going to read my Bible 20 hours a week, but I'll hit the gym 18. Like, are you serious? Like, some people use an analogy, like bodybuilders or stuff like that. Like, if you expect to go to the gym, like, twice a week or once a month, and you expect to get results, it's not going to happen. But yeah. with Jesus, I can come to church once a week and read my Bible maybe once or twice a week, pray every once in a while. But I want to be happy. I want to have a true relationship with him. So where are my results, Jesus? Yeah. And Jesus goes, well, have you put in the work? Like, are you following me? Like, you're not. So why would I give you results? Yeah. Cause just like when we're going to baptism, like thinking about baptism is just like, it's not the end. It's that's actually the beginning. It's a new life. It's like that's that's where that's where we start to make what's important happen. Like that's where we start to work through scripture and, and and when God when we see God's heart, when we want to see God's heart, and we work towards it, it's pouring, you know, hours of your time and giving like offering your time to Jesus. Cause in no way does He need it. Like, in no way does God need us, and nobody wants us, like, yeah. to, like, see that someone, like, doesn't need us. To, what do we do when we have things we don't need? It's like, we just get rid of them. God does not do that with us. He wants us so badly. It's like, he doesn't need us, but he wants us so, so, so badly. And to think about that, and it's amazing, because it's like, being a disciple is choosing Jesus, being changed by Jesus, and committed to the mission of Jesus. That's what we believe. I, that's what a disciple is yeah. and to think about that and to think okay so I have to choose Jesus which means I have to choose to spend time with him yep. it means that I have to choose to spend time with him and give my all for him and be passionate about him and be passionate for him and then to be changed by him and be willing to know that you're going to get thrown off your path and things are going to happen where you're like led in this one direction but God's going to completely you know, lead you in that whole different direction and I know it's tough. And in James 1, it talks about having joy through trials. Yeah. And when you get thrown off this new path, it's like, oh, God, you're putting me somewhere new. And I know it's going to suck right now. It's going to be really difficult to understand. But I know you are good in everything that you do. As Romans 8, 28 says, is for the good of those who love him. Yeah. And, like, you're talking about being thrown on the wrong path. Mm -hmm. The wrong path. But if God's, God's putting you somewhere, and sometimes that's stressful. Sometimes you're like, God, why are you doing this? I had such a perfect thing. And I think it's Isaiah 56, 1 or something like that. It talks about having salvation and doing what is right. And God puts you in situations so you can make a difference. Yeah. And you have to take it and do what's right. Yeah. Because, like, so something I want to do when I grow up, I want to be a pastor to, like, high school kids who are just working in that ministry. And I kind of want to stay at this church because this church is so awesome. Mm. But if God decides that I'm better off in North Carolina preaching to juveniles like i'm gonna do it because that's what god wants for me yeah. and he's shaping you and you have to follow that and you have to accept that because god gives us that decision he gives us the right to choose and sometimes you're like i mean that's crazy and many like non-christians will say well if god is so good why doesn't he just change everybody and make everything good because he gives us the right to choose so we can truly love him because we want to. Not because he forces us to. Like, nobody wants to be... Like, if your parents... Now, this is just, like, hypothetically because it doesn't happen. Let's say your parents, like, pay some kid to be friends with you. Like, like do you really want to be friends with them? Like, right. no, because God wants us to choose to care about him. Mm -hmm. Like, and he lets us do that. So, like, having that option and just... Like, actually taking it and running with it because, like, once you find it, once you truly do love God, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. And, like, back to the election because that's what we were talking about. Like, I see many Christians out there that, like, Trump 2020, because I'm pretty sure the Christian demographic, like, supports Trump a little more. Mm -hmm. And I see so many people my age, um, so many people older than me, so many people out of high school, so many people younger than me that are like, Trump 2020, like, let's go, like, Trump's awesome. And they also consider themselves Christian, and they consider Jesus their top priority. But I don't see them saying, Jesus, like, 
Jesus is so amazing. Like, follow him. Like, he's he's forever our king. Like, that's not what they're saying. They're saying Trump. Like, vote Trump. Mm. And Trump's very temporary. Like, he doesn't give us happiness. But Jesus does. And he will always be our king. Like, Jim Putman, the lead pastor at our church, was saying, uh, like, Jesus doesn't have to be reelected because he doesn't. Because he's right. always yeah. king. And it's like, show the passion you have for Jesus. Show it. Mm. Like, and I struggle with that, too. Like, am I being a real disciple of God? Like, show that, please. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, just kind of closing out here. Um, some, something that I want you guys to kind of go home with and just realize is knowing that Jesus is always going to be on the throne. Mm -hmm. No matter who is elected president, no matter what happens to America, no matter what happens in England, no matter what happens to anywhere in the world, it's Jesus will always be on the throne. Seriously. Always and forever. Yeah. So remembering that and going on with that and realizing that how important that is yeah. is just amazing. Yeah. He's the Alpha and Omega. Yep. He's the beginning and the end. Like mm -hmm. He's going to be there. He's always going to be king. All right, well, I'm going to close this out in prayer. Dear God, thank you so, so much for um, letting me and Cadence just speak to people and God. Thank you so much for, God, just giving us the opportunity to hear your heart and God know who you are and to know that you are so, so powerful and you are so, so loving and you give us the option to love you. And God, I just, I just pray that people would choose you, God, and be passionate about you because uh, God, you deserve way more than that, way more than we could ever get. Uh, and God, I just, just thank you so much for the people. Thank you so much for the, the believers and the non-believers. And God, just how you created us. In the name of Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. <laughs>